We just got done creating a container to store all of our data in. So the next thing we need to do now is we need to create a clipping boundary. And the reason why we need to do that is because we don't want to do a lot of unnecessary geo processing for data that we might not even use. So for example, if I turn on my aerial imagery, this is an aerial for the entire county and what I'm actually going to use is a very very small percentage of this entire aerial but when I do geo processing tasks I can't exactly say well just do this little square right here and ignore the rest it doesn't really know so it will even though we can you know program things in here to say don't do any processing tasks outside of a certain set area it still is going to look at the rest of this aerial and try to do something with that so what we need to do is we actually need to clip our data down to a manageable size. And remember there are two types of GIS data that we'll be working with. The first kind is our raster type data and that's what this aerial image is. This is a raster. We also have some surface data here. And our surface data is also a raster. And we also have some shape files or vector based files. And those are going to be in the forms of polygons, lines, and points. So, this is an example of some line work here. These are polylines. And these would be polygons, which is our soils data. And then we may have some points in here somewhere. So, let me turn all these off. and turn on points and these are our solar points so we're only going to want to process just for what's in our area of interest and not anything outside of it otherwise it'll just take too long and just kill our computer so one like I said one way that we could do this is we can create this clipping boundary so what we're going to do is we're going to create two of them and I'll first start with the raster the first clipping boundary will be for our raster files so I'm going to turn off my surface information. And what I'm going to create is just a really broad general area of interest. It may or may not be the actual border of my site because later we'll create another one just for that. But for now we're just going to create just a really broad stroke one. So down here on my drawing toolbar I want to choose my rectangle tool and I'm just going to just quickly hatch one in here. It may or may not be exact. I can adjust the size later. What I am going to do is I'm going to right click on this while it is selected. And I can tell that it's selected because I see the little handles here indicating that it is selected. I'm going to right click and go to properties. And I'm going to change the symbol. I want the fill color to be no color. And the outline to me maybe something a little bit darker color. And maybe a little bit broader stroke. And now I can see inside the box. Now I can use the handles and adjust the actual size of my clipping boundary. I actually want it to be a little bit bigger than my site. So I do want to see some of the adjacent land uses and access systems and all that stuff. So we have kind of a rectangle here. And now I can use this to clip all of my raster files. For shape files, we will use another shape file to clip shape files. We can make a polygon shape file from the po from the graphic we created in the previous step. The shape file will need a spatial projection. We will use the same spatial projection as our data frame. The data frame may not have one because we haven't set one yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that our data frame has a planar spatial projection with feet as the linear units of measurement. So over here where it says layers I'm just going to select that and then right click and go to properties and then where it says coordinate system I'm going to click on that tab and I want to make sure that it is set to NAD 1983 State Plain Kansas North FIPS 1501 US feet. If yours is not set that way, you can get there by making sure that you're in this projected coordinate system folder and then go to state plane and then go to NAD 1983 US feet 
And then this project site is located in northeastern Kansas. So I'm going to be looking for Kansas in here. It's going to be this one here. Kansas North FIPS 1501. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK to that. And that will be the special projection of my data frame. Next, I want to create the shape file from this graphic that I created in the previous step. So the first thing I need to make sure is that my graphic is selected. I can tell that it is selected because it has the handles around here. If you're having difficulty selecting it, it may be because you don't have the select tool selected. So make sure that you have this select elements tool selected down here and then you can select elements within this data view area. And then I'm going to go over here where it says drawing while I have my graphic rectangle selected. And I'm going to choose convert graphics to features. So I want to convert the polygon graphics it says selected graphics only, and there's only one selected. And it's asking me what coordinate system should it use. Use the same co coordinate system, system as. So I'm going to say the data frame. And that's this up here that we just set earlier. And then output shapefile or feature class. So I'm just going to output it into my D drive, into projects, into Marlet Park. I could output it directly to my geo database, but for now I'm just going to stick it into GIS. I'm going to put it in shape files, and I'm just going to call this ADJ for adjacent, and then AOI for area of interest. And that's six characters long. It doesn't start with a number, no spaces or fancy characters, so it should like that. And then down here where it says save as type. I need to make sure that this is set as a shape file because it's not going into my geo database yet. It's just going on my hard drive somewhere. So it's just going to be a regular shape file. Later we can always import this into our geo database. So I'm going to go ahead and click save. And then I do not want it to automatically delete the graphic after conversion because I'm going to need that graphic to clip on my rasters. Right now I'm just making the polygon shape file to clip my other shape files. I'm going to go ahead and click OK and let that geo process. And it's pretty fast. And it's asked me, do you want to add the exported data to the map layer? I'm going to go ahead and click yes. And it creates it right on top of this one. It will have the same symbology, so you can't really tell if it's there or if it's not there. But it is there because we see it here in our data frame. 